Other interesting business news, you have Dyson Vacuum Company laying off 1,000 employees in Britain. Which, perhaps they can still drink their tea and have the crumpet. And funny British third thing. Now, this is brought to us thanks to Reuters. They say, quote, Dyson to act out of around 1,000 jobs in Britain. You see some of their iconic vacuums, which, I mean, Mr. Dyson is a genius. I think it took him, I mean, I think, was it 1,000 prototypes before he actually invented the first bagless vacuum cleaner? Which, granted, they, what is it? I have a cousin, obviously, he's doing well in life. He has a Dyson. I mean, I still use the free shark, or I repaired it. Yeah, I got for free in college the dust shark. Well, the red stand-up vacuum. But in terms of technology, it's very impressive to be able to get this to the point where you don't need to have the lifetime buying of these filters. It is ingenious. Now, pulling up the actual article, you see some of the stand-up vacuums, which I think they're like 400 bucks plus. It is astronomical. Now, they, they say, quote, vacuum cleaner manufacturer Dyson will cut about 1,000 jobs in Britain, more than a quarter of its workforce in, in the country as part of a global restructuring, which... Spoiler alert, yeah, there's, they don't really make anything in Great Britain, partially because, again, government regulation, increased cost of labor, so, spoiler alert, they make most of these outside of that country. They say, quote, the company founded by James Dyson was the inventor of the backless cleaner, employs 3,500 people in Britain, including its research and development center in Malesbury, West England. CEO Hanno Kerner said on Tuesday, quote, we have grown quickly, and like all companies, we review our global structures from time to time to ensure we are prepared for the future. As such, we are proposing changes to our organization, which may result in redundancies. Dyson operates in increasingly fierce and competitive global markets, in which the pace of innovation and change is not only accelerating. We know we always need to be the entrepreneur and agile principles that are not new to Dyson. Unquote. Which, yeah, in terms of the knockoffs for these products, they pop up like whack-a-mole, especially when you go to e-commerce platforms. They are everywhere. And there are some countries notorious, I mean, if you just say the word patent, I'm pretty sure people laugh at you in China because they they do not respect patents over there. They just knock it off. It's impressive how quickly and efficiently they do that in that country. And yeah, this is very much a premium product. You have more and more competition. Again, Dyson does have some really cool innovations. I know they have the air blade. If you want to spend like like 1500 bucks, no, it's more than that. Like the bathroom one, you put your hands in just mag seemingly magical. Oh, it's not magical. You know how it works. But yeah, the little air blade cleaner there. So they have some cool innovations. Now, they say that as well as this revolutionary psychotic uh, cleaners, Dyson also manufactures air purifiers, hair dryers, and other appliances. They started moving manufacturing from Malesbury, England to Malaysia in 2002 and opened a new plant in Singapore in 2013 to make digital motors. In 2019, it moved its corporate office to Singapore to be closer to manufacturing sites and Asian markets that accounted for most or much of its sales. Which, that's pretty interesting. I wouldn't have thought that would be one of the biggest areas. I thought the U.S., because... I mean, not just because, you know, the U.S. is the best, but realistically, that is one of the largest markets in the world, especially when it comes to premium products. And these things start at, you know, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of dollars. So, yeah, it makes it interesting. But nevertheless, they say that, quote, the move was controversial, was controversial given James Dyson's support for Britain to leave European Union in 2016. The company, however, said the decision had nothing to do with Brexit. The Dyson, or Dyson continues to invest in research and development and product design in Britain, including working on an electric, electric vehicle, <laughs> of, of course, until it was abandoned, the project, in 2019. Which, yeah, I remember reading that a couple years ago. I thought it was the dumbest thing on the planet for a vacuum company to make an EV. I mean, for most companies to make an EV in general, since, again, most of them, a majority of them lose money. I mean, Ford lost $131,000, or was $132,000 per EV sold Q2. Granted, yes, these companies are slowly moving in the right direction, but as far as I know, GM is getting there. Tesla is really the only one that, again, they took the biggest risk on the planet. They only recently, relative to the company history, are making a profit there. So it's kind of comical to think that a vacuum manufacturer would want to step up and start manufacturing cars, EVs. It'll be interesting to see what comes in terms of the next innovations and if they ended up just leaving Great Britain area just entirely. I mean, let me know. And again, I mean, the average consumer, I think they care less and less in terms of, you know, where these companies are headquartered and where the manufacturing is done. I mean, but let me know in the comments. As always, I'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment. 
is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.